Hello, welcome to the LHC, where, screw it, we're going to decide what time travel is. <laughs> Today we're going to look at the um, in-universe effects of Avengers Endgame. <laughs> uh, rather than looking at like whether the film was any good, which, you know, I think it was, um, or talking about it in detail, we, I just... The thing that really got to me about the Avengers is not necessarily what happens in the film, but what happens an hour after the film. Mm. That's what's far more interesting to me, and not to the superheroes. To everyone to else. People, yeah, yeah. To everyone else. So massive spoilers for the end of the Avengers, yes. but yeah. the end of the film, if you don't know it, they undo the death snap that Thanos Five had. Five years later. But they don't, they don't reset the clock. So basically... At the end of the film, what you have is you have the time period running, da 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 da, and then everyone's well, half the people in the world are dead. Then you have five years of those half a pe- half the world being dead, and then those people are all back instantly, just where they were when they died, mm. right? So, just how in the hell the world would cope with that? Because I really hope Spider Man addresses it. Because I just think logistically and everything about that is kind of fascinating to me as a thought experiment. Oh, absolutely! Like, what if you what if you remove fifty percent of the population and then put them back without any warning mm. as well? Because, well, firstly, there's going to be a fair few scenes of, oh my god, how could you get with my friend and have kids and have got married? How did you move on so much in five years? Because mm. that'll happen. You know, your partner's dead and disappears and then there's the grief and then you seek comfort in someone you know and then you end up getting together and then you get married and then you are having a mm. kid. Like, what do you do? What do you do when your wife is suddenly just not dead? Yep. That's kind of... I just really want to see that. How the hell people were going to address that because... Yeah, imagine you get back and you've been dead for five years and it's all very well if you're Spider-Man and you've been dead for five years and then you go back to school and that's one thing. But then what if you go back to your home and obviously you haven't got a job anymore and your partner appears to be living with your neighbour or your best friend or just some random they met at a support group and is having a new baby and you're saying, hey, I want to go back to our old life. I mean... God, it'd be so horrific to come back to that. It does seem, uh, at least in Spider-Man, that all Peter Parker and all of his school friends all got snapped. Because yeah. that's the other one. I mentioned him earlier, and yet, if you want to talk about him, imagine you're a student, you die, and then five years later, you're back. Mm. That means that, like, half, exactly half your class will have moved on and graduated and got jobs and have been working for a while. And... That's going to have affected quite a lot of things. Like, it might not be the whole, we were married and you've moved on. But it's certainly, hey, the girl I was dating at school is now 23. And I'm still 18 and still finishing my final year of high school. Well, yeah, I always think it does seem that how did Thanos divide the entire universe in half using the Infinity Gauntlet to, to split between who got killed and who didn't seems seems deliberately vague so that they can let certain people be dead and certain people not be dead so that they can have that whole issue with other people's movies. So they don't yeah, need to well, worry. Well, they did say, you know, um, the random nature of it was important because that was part of his philosophy is that you shouldn't be prejudiced against anyone. It should be purely random who dies. Mm. Unless, but, unless they yeah, get annoying, think... as he says in the movie. <laughs> unless they get really annoying. Yeah. <laughs> But no, the thing of, like, as you say, Peter Parker's going to come back and, oh, it's a good thing your love interest isn't now 23 yeah. or 21, I suppose, in their case, because they're meant to be younger mm. than 18. But no, it is a case of, um, isn't it nice how your best friend and your f- love interest and a couple of other people, because, yeah, half the class is going to be... Well, that's the thing I was going to say, right, so are all half the class? Because you could arguably uh, wipe out everyone in Europe and that wouldn't even come close to half the population of Earth. And if there are, say, 
uh, let's say, 500,000 inhabited worlds in the Milky Way, um, if you wiped out just half the inhabitants of the galaxy, you could wipe out whole worlds, and you would don't you wouldn't be that, wiping out half the people. But that wasn't his. No, I get the he feeling. Didn't believe in genocide of a race. He was specifically saying half of each race selected well, no, pure from random. the planet. I do think he did do it by planet, but that means it could be very easy, easily to easy to assume that you whole countries could have been wiped dis- off the face of the earth by Thanos's thing well, and then randomly bad restored random number generation from yeah. that uh yeah but no i'm just saying just talking to students still for yeah. a bit imagine you know you're coming up to your exams and then suddenly one five years have gone by like things have changed the syllabus is mm. different but also half your class has to repeat the year and the other half is now the previous year coming yeah. up like you're now suddenly in a class with a whole new set of students, all of whom were alive and who have lived through the snap, the post-snap mm. world. I mean, the main thing, though, is, firstly, not to get particularly bleak and morbid, but um, there was an awful lot of death caused by the first snap that wouldn't be reversed. Yeah, yeah. Because they specifically say only the people killed by Thanos, mm. not, for example, Vision or any of the other people who died in the battle... Yeah. But you know, when we see in the post credit scene planes dropping out of the yeah. sky, for example. Oh, they're all yeah, dead. they're all dead. And they're not coming back. The pilot comes back, but does he come back in midair? <laughs> because he was in midair, and everyone's apparently coming back exactly where they were. Yeah. So, yeah, the pilot just reappears at 30,000 feet and plummets well, no, he's, into the he ground. He starts to plummet, and then it's a freeze frame, and it's like, so, how did I get here? <laughs> <laughs> you might be thinking that my whole time as a pilot was a really boring story capped off with this one action moment of weirdness and you'd be right and then he just disappears from <laughs> <laughs> just splatters on the ground but this is the thing like yes all of those people are dead and to then say the next one uh yeah depressing as it is there'll be a lot of suicide like both individual and group with that level of well, let's not forget horrible that happened anyway. Event. That happened even after the end of Age of Ultron. The whole Civil War thing came off of a person's grief from the stuff that happened in Age of Ultron. So it wouldn't surprise yeah. me if this becomes fertile ground for new people and everything. And there's like no, a exactly, permanent yeah. divide between the people who have essentially missed five years of their life. Missed while they haven't lost five years of life, they've missed five years of earning stuff and everything. I don't. I think that might get put away but wouldn't that be a massive problem if you just essentially jumped five years forward in time and the world went on without well, you yeah. I think the major one is I'm just saying if you think about there was a lot of death after the snap that wasn't directly related to the snap but also I think there'll be a lot of death quite soon because if you have 50% of the population and that then surely means that you've rejigged your agriculture and your food supplies to only need to support 50% of the population, mm. which you're then, at no real notice whatsoever, going to have to double your food production. Now, in places like America and the UK and other sort of Western rich countries, you can probably manage to soak mm. it. But you think about the the poorer nations, they're probably going to be an awful lot of starvation caused by suddenly having twice as many mouths to mm. feed and not knowing this was happening during last year's crop planting season, nor have you had the hands to help with the field work until mm. then. You know, you're just looking at that. But also, nobody's jobs is going to be there. There'll be mass unemployment. Mm-hmm. Because already when we had uh, Ant-Man like walking through the streets, everywhere's boarded. I mean, I did think they might have overdone that a little because there were a lot of places boarded up. But, do you know, I think you would get a lot of places that have been completely oh, abandoned. Because yeah. half the people go and then the other half would just move somewhere to In be... more concentrated people. Yeah. Exactly. Rather than having a half-empty city, you'd probably rather psychologically have an empty city... And a full yeah. city. Well, I think... You know, if you're going to have half and, and half. weirdly enough, we're starting to sound pro-Thanos here, because that's kind of what he wanted, is that with the let fewer people, then, like, nature takes over, and we have more space and everything. You don't have to grow as much food. Like, he's like, oh, look, it totally works, which is not true. I <laughs> don't want to particularly go into this as the topic of this oh, yeah, episode, yeah. but I, I am pro-Thanos, oh, to be sake. fair. 
No, not no, not not quite pro. <laughs> no, the thing is, I my wife is pro Thanos. I'm not. I am pro middle ground. <laughs> how right? how disturbing? I don't think we should kill everyone. I think that people should breed mm. less. Well, people is enforced by the. Here's globe, the thing. If need we be. do. If you if you end up giving people more stuff to do and everything, they actually do breed less. And sometimes, actually, capitalism at the moment is disincentivizing children. Like, I love this whole thing that they've got in, in Japan. They're scared of their declining birth rate. And it's like, yeah. well, Japan, what on earth is someone supposed to do if they have a child? Who's supposed to look after it? Like, if you have yeah. a child... Uh, what is uh, and you have no set thing for uh, maternity leave, and yeah. everything is ex- or child, or child care. care, and everything's expensive out the wazoo. Who's going to have a kid? Exactly. Yeah. The only people who are going to have kids are the people who have the the circumstances that allow for that, which mm. will be, you know, if one partner earns enough to support the other partner doing the child rearing. Mm. You know, if you're going back to essentially pre um you know when you when you this is the thing like uh, my my partner always says you know it's nice that we have all this stuff but you can we talk about sometimes it's really obvious why one person was a homemaker traditionally for most of human history because washing all the clothes and the dishes tidying up sorting the meals all of that sort of stuff that is a full-time job well, yeah. Like, That's something that if you should think be about doing all that without technology. It's ridiculously full time to do. Well, all no, that. yeah, but that was uh, that's kind of like a lot of stuff that's unfairly put on them. What I mean is like ch- is childcare, as in like you have a child that cannot look after itself for a considerable period of time, and you have to look after yeah. that child. At yeah, best, looking know, after looking after the household is very different and should have been shared from the beginning. And the only reason oh, yeah, is because of disproportionate. No, uh, 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 distribution of power, of like social yes. capital, but yeah, um, and that yeah, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'd say you, you'd be surprised if people like actually think people should breed less. We're actually well on the way to doing that. And also, by the way, people just don't have as many kids as they used to because we're slowly coming out of the feeling of oh yeah, we used to actually have a lot of kids, but why? Because you had high infant mortality rate. In a lot of places. Yeah. Like, do you know what's still... Or we just followed up the war where everyone was dead mm. from the yeah, war. Yeah. I know that that was a great yeah. feeling for, like, my my parents mm. are from relatively large families compared to the modern day family because they both just... Uh, my grandparents had just come out of the mm. war and as such, you know, there was a huge amount of empty homes. Mm. And also... Like it, I, as I mean, like there are there are advanced countries where that still happens, like where people still celebrate the child's first birthday in Korea. Because I recently learned, because I recently had uh, for my job like cultural sensitivity training, and one of the actual new things I learned was that you in there are still places in Korea where the celebration of a child's first birthday is a celebration on par with a small wedding Cause because it's lived. lived more than a year, which wasn't. Literally, oh, barely sixty years ago, would not be insured because of how m- many people were starving generally. Yeah, but the 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 politics or the ethics of all of the anyway, get, yeah, but get back to it. Yeah, the problem we have now no, is actually, everyone turning up again. Yeah, the thing is turning up again, and like I say, the infrastructure is not there to maintain it, and I do think that. You're going to have, firstly, mass unemployment because everything's going to have started to function with the idea of this lower population because losing 50% of the population is going to cause things like a massive plummet of the economy. And But you're not going to have starvation because whilst you might have less people to help out with the agriculture and the food production, mm. at the same time, you're going to have enough people to manage because you've still got half the mouths to feed and a lot of that's automated. But five years later, you are not going to have maintained the level of support structure for a population that you have come to accept is not coming mm-hmm. back. So the whole thing like, is just, for a start, why would anyone build new houses? You wouldn't. There's so much property that's now abandoned mm. that actually inst- your house creation infrastructure will now be completely rejigged into... Renovating. 
re-renovating existing property that has become dilapidated through our not being mm. used. And so there won't be anyone building. So yeah, and also a lot of those structures will have been repurposed or just be so old and dilapidated that they can't be used yet. And so all these people just suddenly coming back, it's like, yes, you've got this whole smile, hooray, da da da. But um, do you know, Avengers, if you'd have given the world warning, I know you don't want to give them hope, <laughs> But you could have given the government some warning, perhaps, <laughs> so they could set stuff up in advance. Yeah, but it wasn't even insured. I, I think the, the, the extreme nature of what was happening was, uh, was like, not... It made it kind of impossible to do that. No, no, I know that, I know. But what I'm saying is, can you imagine, like, being... Just an everyday person, and then everyone just comes back. Just an everyday person, everyone comes back, and it's just like, wow... Okay, and as you say, there's just going to be this huge divide between people who have lived through five years of grief and people who have just disappeared and come mm. back. You know, it, the people who are going to co- I mean, yes, they're going to have this whole displacement issue of feeling like the world's moved on without you because it literally mm. has. And the other people are going to have all the trauma and then the sudden return of these people. It's just... Like, as much as the film frames it as like a hooray, we got them back, everyone's alive. I'm sort of like, oh my god, the problems. There's so many problems. Mm-hmm. And I really do hope that Spider Man addresses it well, because. You've got oh. to remember, their current version of Spider Man seems to be Spider Man, who evades all uh, consequences for his actions. <laughs> <laughs> so it's in a way that I always feel, yeah. even though I do I do like the new Spider Man and I do didn't mind uh, Spider Man Homecoming, I do do feel that it kind of lost a bit of the spirit of Spider Man there, where Spider Man is all about having horrible, often unintended consequences to well-meaning actions or occasionally selfish yeah. actions. It's sort of like you know to show the whole thing of like being a superhero is hard, and it's it's really like who had all the consequences in Spider Man Homecoming? Oh, his <laughs> his enemy, his enemy really. and the enemy had all the and the lady. What's it called? You know, the lady. Um, what's the you know the 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 the, the, the I've forgotten the name of the lady that he was trying to get with that turned out to be the vultures. The yeah, love his interest. love interest. MJ. No, not MJ. MJ's the other one. MJ's the MJ's oh, the character uh, that he's met in uh, in 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 his uh, team, and they didn't reveal it until yes, the end. So uh, MJ's part of his uh, quizzing team. So... I don't remember. Yeah. Was she from the comics one? Was she no, one she's not dies? really Gwen Stacy either. She's completely new, which is kind of okay. nice. I didn't mind that. But um, no, it was but... alright. But the problem with that is, if you introduce anyone to Spider Man, it's like, "Hi, my name's Peter Parker. I'm secretly Spider Man. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm your love interest. My name is Gwen Stacy. You're going yeah. to die. My okay, you're uh, going MJ. To... We're going to get together. Random. Well, you're not yeah. lasting." <laughs> It's part of the problem with adaptations um, in that nobody will ever accept him being yeah. anyone better. Yeah, oh, no, but you do different things. I mean, I guess the current Spider-Man TV show, he is still with MJ, but I mean, there's enough sort of backup stuff that he could be with Osborne as well. Yeah, fair point. Uh, mainly mainly just because uh, I follow a, a storyboarder on social media and she's big on, even though she works on Spider-Man, she doesn't work anymore, but she did work on Spider-Man. She was all about drawing, shipping <laughs> Osborne and Parker together. <laughs> uh, that would have been a more interesting um, well, way to Have you noticed Osborne the... isn't in this at all so far? No. Well, mm. so far, yeah. But no, I just I just love thinking about the, these sort of thought experiments about just the sheer... Poly- I think you'd end up with like refugee camps of all these people who've come mm. back. I think you'd end up with mass starvation and I certainly think you'd end up with you know, prejudice, riots, and um, just no one being able to handle mm-hmm. it. Because for a start, all your money's gone. Mm. You died. Like, you're dead. Say you've got all your savings. You own your house, right? So you own mm. your house, and you've got all your mm. savings, and you mm. die. Those savings are then given to your next of kin, who are also dead. Because, say, the bad luck is you, your wife, and your child all disappear, mm. right? Which means that then that's all gone. Well, what's probably going to have happened there is it goes to the next person who's next of kin who is alive. All right, fair enough. They've spent it or they've 
sold the house and other people live yeah. there now. You get to come back and you're going to have to go and petition the government and go, hi, government, I need my hundred grand back. I need my pension back. I need my house back. I owned that. Why? I don't like the government's either going to have to do a buyback system of anyone who's living somewhere or give the money away to the people who have come back. You know, you're just going to have a thing. It would collapse under this mm. system. What? There's, there's no way that these people could just reappear and it wouldn't destroy the world as we know it's it. It's certainly worse... Just as much as them killing... Yeah, it's them. almost in a way worse than the other one because then you've got a load of people for whom no time has passed and they've arrived and they're like, what the hell, rest of the world? And the rest of the world was like, we're pretty sure that you were dead forever. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> yeah, we, we, we weren't expecting this sort of situation. I mean, wait, we've seen things like that you know, once or twice, people-wise. Like, I don't know, the whole point of Arrow is that he's dead and gets to come back, but is thought of as dead. And, you know, there's a load of other ones where, oh, I've... um, Was it Iron Fist? He's been gone since he was a kid, and he comes back and goes, yeah, I could do with all my Mm -hmm. money, and I need to prove I'm me, and all of that. And that's one thing, but when everyone comes back, firstly, you don't have to prove who you are, but also, maybe you do. Like, this would be the prime time for identity theft. Oh, God, yeah. Because you just turn up and you're just like, hey, I'm actually Steve Johnson. Where's your ID? Oh, it's all gone from the snap. I think this is going to be the newer, and it would be nicer if it was a slightly more human version of, oh, how did this random small bad guy do stuff? Oh, they got like old Chitari stuff or something. That was in... Because that was like over and over in the the Shield TV series, wasn't it? It was always like, oh, we got some old stuff from the Battle of New York. Oh, some old stuff from the Battle of New York. Got stuff like yeah, and also Spider-Man Spider-Man Homecoming. Ah, oh, I was hired to clean up, and then I was kicked out of cleaning up of Battle of New York, it. so I just nicked it. And it's like, yeah, so I can totally see like a load of people going, yeah, what's this freaking? All, what are these army of mooks from? Because these are all people that lost their lives because of your heroism, <laughs> and you know they had no choice yeah. but to turn to crime. No, exactly. Do you know what would be a great microcosm for this? To examine it? Wakanda. Have... I actually think Wakanda might have been That's the thing. Right. That's the thing. Is Wakanda can do it better than everyone else, but they can still have, come into conflict because T'Challa just turns up and they're like, oh, I've been running Wakanda on my own for like five years. And like, they've got all of those differing groups that all have different wants and needs. So it's entirely possible that there's like been a whole political upheaval that in Wakanda that T'Challa needs to come back to like smooth out and what's great is you can have it because Wakanda is fictionalized all of their problems are entirely fic- fictionalized kind of you can take mm. that take stuff from the real world to put into Wakanda and show your idea of what a proper solution would be and so then the cool thing can then again be Wakanda turning up and going hey everybody have you thought about this to solve your problems <laughs> yeah i mean i think do you know what i actually think the real thing would be is the government would have to employ everyone. <laughs> Not everyone, you know. It's guaranteed employment. Um, guarantee. This is the thing. My part, my, I, I don't know. I haven't tested it with economic theory and uh, other politician weighing in on this sort of thing. But if I was in charge of the country, I would probably say, right, what we need to do is first employ all of the people who have come back. If they want a job, we can give them a job. And that job will be restoring the infrastructure because that's what we need so everybody if you want a job we've got jobs you can refurbish the houses that have become dilapidated from misuse you can get back on with the food production that we've let slide you can sort out all the rail network or whatever might have gotten down a bit but you know you're gonna have to get the government to employ like that and you're gonna have to start getting because, like I say, the people who survived are actually going to have inherited all the wealth of the people who Yeah, didn't. this is going to be this massive disparity. And not disparity. all of them will want to give it back. Because yep. this is the thing. If my wife lived, but I died during the snap, and then I came back five years later, you know, touch wood, she hasn't moved <laughs> on, I would hope she's still in my home and still has all my money, <laughs> you know? She probably had to support herself without my income for a while, so she might have a lot less money. But certainly, my stuff is probably going to be still here. Mm. But if my stuff is not here, because my wife wasn't here, say, for example, me and my wife disappeared, and my mother has inherited everything, 
she's around, but then has sold my home and given away all my possessions. Mm. I'm going to have to get that crap back. Or buy new stuff. I'm going to be massively out of pocket. But everyone who lived is going to have all their money. It just is, You're going to have to get the government to give it back to you. So, I don't know. You might have to institute like a benefit for the snapped and a tax for the non-snapped. It's just, it's utterly ludicrous. And the whole thing just, I just, I really feel like we're talking about a systematic collapse of government, society, and mass starvation and riots and yeah. death. Well, let's... <laughs> Hooray for the happy ending! <laughs> but then I always do this. I always do, like, I was watching, um, I don't know, Fifty First Dates uh, the other night because I just wanted something crappy to background. So I put on the Adam Sandler film, which is about when Drew Barrymore doesn't have a short-term mm. memory. And I just sort of went, yeah, the happy ending is that they get together and it's all this. And I went, no, no, let's just take this further. What is her life like? And where does things go with this? And how would you have to accommodate that? And also, she's got a kid now. How traumatizing would that be that your mother doesn't remember you every mm. day? Every day they're like, oh my God, I have a kid. I feel so weird. How could I connect? You just not have a real relationship with your mm. mother. And things like this. But you can do this with loads of films where it says that it's finished and you just kind of go, but really what would have happened? Let's just keep going for 10 years. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It's a minor hobby of mine. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, there wasn't there like a show that wasn't uh, to that degree, but was called like The Missing or something where like uh, a load of people just disappeared for a year or something and then came back and they've all got generally got there's some other stuff like they've all got superpowers or something. That was the 4400 4, superpowers. Yeah, that... The missing, wasn't it that they were all dead and that they came back to life? Oh, was it? I, don't, I didn't have a saw it. I think so. But no, the 4400 was people have disappeared and then they come back and they all have powers. And yeah, I think quite a lot of... I, what I liked about that was they did kind of address a lot of this thing in that no, if you come back and you were 40, none of your skills are valid anymore because you've disappeared 20 years oh, ago. Yeah. Like... You come back and you're just like, I'm going to have to retrain because nothing I know is relevant and I have no ability to function within society. You also, you did have people coming back to discover that their partner has got children with someone else and has remarried, Ooh. you know, all of that sort of stuff. So the 4400 was actually fast. I remember it being quite good, although it ends stupidly abruptly just as it starts to get its sort of... You know when something's clearly going up for its final run up mm. for the last season? It did that. It did like this huge inciting event and went, and now this. And then it got cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> so we could have just done with one more series to actually see the ending. But no, I quite like the whole um, Spirited Away. Yeah. Hell, the very first thing we did on the LHC was a Spirited Away yeah, story. Yeah, you're right. With Vals of yeah. Fun. So... You know, obviously, I have a bit of a thing where I'm interested in that stuff. You're very right. It is essentially being, they've been spirited away, except in a really crappy version. <laughs> I don't know. I think because the difference with spirited away is that that someone disappears into the woods or a cave and is never seen again. And then 10 years later, they are seen again. But we thought we were never going to see you again. And you don't know what happened, but you know something mysterious is going on. Someone turning to dust and disintegrating in front of your eyes. You kind of feel like you know what happened. Mm. Even if you don't know the cause, oh, they're dead. 